Am I a Qigong master? Let's talk about that and more in today's walk and talk video. I'm Sifu Anthony and I'm here near Jackson, Mississippi. I'm parked in a beautiful state park. Let me show you. My camper van is right there. And let me show you my view for the evening. This is a beautiful view of this pond or lake here. Normally I would have my co-pilot, Sergeant Pepper, with me, but uh, it's really hot here. You can see I'm already sweating. And we went for a little walk earlier and he's overheated. So he's actually in the camper van with the air conditioning on, cooling off. If you don't know Sergeant Pepper, he's my, my little Muppet, my little mini miniature schnauzer. Okay, so let's talk about this topic. Am I a Qigong master? Well, what is a master? What does that mean? And w when students ask me this question, what are they really getting at? Let's talk about this. So there's actually a fairly simple answer, uh, but to do that, we need to demystify the art of Qigong and put it where it belongs, which is right next to many other arts. So whether it's Qigong or Tai Chi or the violin or writing or even a lot of athletics, uh, mastery is something that we can basically define. It doesn't need to be mysterious. Uh, the, there's been research done and the research shows that basically after roughly 10,000 hours of solid practice, you become a master or uh, an expert or you reach a level of mastery. The words are tricky because when we say I'm a master or she's a master, it implies that there's, you know, an end, that, that they're done, that they've reached this level and they're done. They're a master, so therefore they're done. They've reached perfection. And that's not how it works. It's not how it works in Qigong. It's not how it works in really any art. Uh, mastery is a journey, not a destination. Let me say that again because it's really important. Mastery is a journey, not a destination. So if you view it that way, then things start to change. And then this 10,000 hour rule, which not everybody agrees upon. Some, there's some disagreement also on, on the number of hours. Some people think it's 12,000. Some people think it's 8,000. But this 10,000 hour rule, which I believe in, I think is a very good starting point for understanding a topic like this. It, it helps us to understand that all we're doing is pointing to a particular signpost along the journey. It doesn't say, okay, after 10,000 hours, you're done. It just means, okay, 10,000 hours is where people hit that level that we tend to call mastery. It might happen sooner, it might happen later, but that's roughly how long it takes in any art. Now, of course, in just about any art, you've got people who have practiced way more than 10,000 hours, and I'm one of them. So if you include all of my training, including karate, uh, Zen meditation, Qigong, Tai Chi, Shaolin Kung Fu, all of these arts, which there's a tremendous amount of overlap, and if you include my teaching hours as well, I have somewhere around 27,000 hours of practice. So then the answer becomes simple. Am I a Qigong master? Well, yeah, I've done about 27,000 hours of practice. Uh, translated, for those of you who appreciate some quick math, 10,000 hours is two hours a day, every day, for about 13 years. So that can be intimidating to some people. That seems like a lot for people in the Qigong world, especially my students who the basic routine that I teach is about 15 minutes a day. So if you're only doing 15 minutes a day, yes, it's going to take you a while to hit 10,000 hours. But it's still, I think, useful to understand this 10,000 hour rule and to figure out sort of where you are in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to take you out on the dock. It's a little bit bright and you'll see me squinting a little bit, but I think it's worth it because the view is pretty amazing. So you know, you can figure this out and you can decide whether or not to include some of the other arts you practice. So, for example, if you've done a lot of sitting meditation, do you count those hours? Yeah, I think, why not? You know, there's no, there's no commission here that's going to, you know, approve or deny your, <laughs> your mastery here. Mastery is much more subtle than that. And by the way, you know, a teaching cer certificate is, is, doesn't say whether or not somebody is a master. And I think it's fine. You know, people can certainly teach the art of Qigong without necessarily being a master. Um, you know, most teachers in arts like Qigong and Tai Chi and yoga, they have somewhere between 50 and 200 hours of teacher specific training and hopefully some more training than that as, as well. Uh, just a couple hundred hours. We're not talking about 10,000 hours. So 
uh, it's sort of a diff different subject, the subject of teacher certification. But mastery, well, by the way, how about this view? Pretty spectacular. I think we're in for a pretty nice sunset as well. Should be, should be beautiful over there. So when people ask me, are you a master? Uh, you know, the simple answer would be yes, but the problem is, first of all, there are some really negative connotations to the word master. I just don't like the word. So, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it traces back to slavery and all sorts of awful things, and I, I don't like that those connotations of the word. Plus, it really does give this idea of, yes, I am a master, and therefore I am done. Uh, it also brings up all these crazy ideas of, you know, Qigong and Tai Chi being reserved for Chinese people. There's a lot of people who still think that someone like me, me being a Caucasian guy, uh, can't possibly be a master of an art like Qigong, which of course is nonsense. And there's also people who think that I'm too young to be a master of Qigong, which would never come up in any other art. Only in an art like Qigong would that be, be an issue. But of course, it's not true either. It's because, like I said, I've got 27,000 hours. Now, the cool thing about Qigong is that, especially in the old days, when they started um, kids quite young, let's say, well, young by today's standard, maybe, like starting at the age of 10, maybe in a temple setting, and someone who starts at the age of 10 especially in a strict environment, practicing several hours a day, how many hours have they racked up by the time they hit 80? So you do have in arts like Qigong and Tai Chi and Shaolin Kung Fu, people who've been practicing for, you know, six, seven, eight decades, and they've racked up who knows how many hours of practice. So in that context, my 27,000 hours is nothing. It's, it's just sort of a, I'm a beginner. Uh, but Compared to most people, 27,000 hours is a lot, of, a lot of practice. And it puts me well on the path to mastery. So I don't like that word master, master because it implies all the negative connotations aside. It implies uh, that I'm done, that like I've reached this destination and therefore I'm done. And that's not at all the impression I want to give with an art like, with an art like Qigong. Because to me, this is a lifelong art. This is something I'll be, I love this art. I'll be practicing it for the rest of my life. That's what I want for my students. I want you to fall in love with it and practice it forever and ever. And I don't ever want to give the idea that like, you just keep practicing, you hit this thing and then you're done. So I think the 10,000 hour rule is helpful there. It helps us to understand that it's a path to mastery, but then we're not done at 10,000 hours. We keep going and keep going and we practice for the love of the art. Uh, in fact, I, I would, practice Qigong even if there were no benefits outside of the practice itself. For me, the practice itself is so enjoyable, I love it so much, that I would do it even if I didn't get all these other benefits. Of course, most of us come to Qigong because we want those benefits. We, for me, it was I wanted to, you know, overcome my depression and my back pain and anxiety and chronic fatigue. You know, we want those benefits, clearly, and that's, that's great. Those are along the path. But the practice itself is also beautiful. And the process of mastery, the journey of mastery, is beautiful, really, in any art. So let's not discount that. Let's, let's celebrate the journey, not just the destination. Now, sometimes, and I'm going to get into a little trouble here, but I'm used to getting into trouble, uh, people can practice for 10,000 hours, but they don't seem to show the results that they should. How does that work? <clears throat> so in an art like Qigong, you should show obvious benefits of the art, right? If, so I've been practicing for 10,000 hours. Well, what do I have to show for it? Well, I'm in good shape and I overcame my depression and back pain and chronic fatigue and anxiety and many other things. And uh, I have a lot of mental clarity. I have a lot of energy. Uh, my heart is much more open than it used to be. I, have, I show a lot of benefits of the art of Qigong. Uh, if you come to a class with me in person, you can sort of, um, I don't want this to sound mystical, but when I say you can feel my energy, you can feel that I can sort of get a desired result in my students. And that yeah, there's something to it in terms of energy. In, in, in the Qigong uh, tradition, it's called sort of creating a Qigong field or zone in a class. So I can do that. That's also a manifestation of my practice. Um, but, you know, sometimes people practice for many, many years and they don't show, they don't show the results. So are they a master? Well, yes, they're a master. But uh, for example, in the world of Qigong, very often what happens is they're a master of Qigong form, not actual Qigong, 
does that mean? It means they've mastered the external movements of Qigong, but not much else. Um, to translate to the world of sitting meditation, it would be like somebody who's mastered the sitting meditation posture, but not meditation itself. Sitting meditation is an internal art. The important stuff happens on the inside. And the same is true of Qigong. But the problem with Qigong is that many people get distracted by the beautiful movements. And the movements do feel good and they're nice and you can get some good results from them, but that's not the heart of Qigong. And unfortunately, many people practice Qigong for many, many years, focusing mainly on the physical form. This is a big part of my teaching is bringing people back, uh, whether they're beginner, or intermediate, advanced, even an instructor, and if they've lost sight of this important fact that Qigong is an internal art, well, I help them to bring it, bring it back to the essence of Qigong and to focus on the internal aspects. So if you have been focusing on the internal aspects, if you've been practicing Qigong, that means energy cultivation, if you've been practicing the art of energy cultivation, which is an internal meditative art for 10,000 hours, then you're going to show the results. It's really, it's just one of these equations. It's like if you lift weights correctly and consistently and you have proper nutrition, you're going to get stronger. It's just, you know, it's, it's just a, a simple equation. If this, then that. If you practice Qigong for 10,000 hours and you're actually practicing it correctly, which means you're practicing it as an internal art, then you're going to get results. If you haven't gotten those results, it means you're not practicing it correctly or you're just practicing Qigong form. And that sucks. That's, you know, that's a bitter pill to swallow. That's, that's a painful truth. But you can always course correct. You can always get on a better path and you'll be glad you did because you'll, your benefits will skyrocket. Once you acknowledge that you've been just practicing Qigong sort of on the surface level as an external art, but you can fix it. And I've helped many, many people to do this. Um, well, then suddenly, you know, you just are able to go much deeper with the art and get much better results and you'll be glad you did. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you to frame things, uh, you know, to frame Qigong just like any other art. And when we're talking about mastery in any art, we're talking about the 10,000 hour rule. And, you know, you can try to figure out where you are in the grand scheme of the 10,000 hour rule. For me, I'm at about 27,000 hours at my last calculation and I'm in no way done. You know, I, I plan on hitting 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 hours. Uh, of course, who knows? No one knows how long this crazy mystery of life will last, but that's my plan at least. And I love the art more now after 27,000 hours than I did in the beginning. And, you know, so that's my simple answer when people ask, are you a Qigong master? The answer is a very simple and clear Yes. And if people try to make this more complicated than it is, or they try to mystify, I, 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 I work hard to demystify the art, but if they try to make this, you know, more mystical than it, than it, than it is, um, you don't need to be rude, but you can, you can just, you know, nod and smile. But you know in your heart that Qigong is an art. And yes, it's an art that comes from China, and it's beautiful and, you know, it's esoteric in many ways, but it is just an art in the end. And it, in many ways, it's no different than the piano. It has very different uh, methods than the piano or, and very different results than playing the piano, but it's an art just like anything else. Don't let anybody else, you know, convince you otherwise or try to make things more complicated than they are. Qigong is an art. We've got the 10,000 hour rule. It applies to Qigong and many other arts. And in my case, I've got, like I said, 27,000 hours, uh, and that makes me a master, but it doesn't make me perfect. It doesn't mean I'm done with the art. It just means I, I, I'm an expert. That's probably a better term, but in the world of Qigong, you have to use the word master. And, you know, people never ask me, are you an expert in Qigong? That would be a better question, I think. Are you an expert? I think the answer is pretty clear, yes. Uh, you know, follow me, follow my teachings, read my blogs. Uh, follow my stuff for a little while and I think it'll be clear that like I'm an expert because I know a lot about it and more importantly I can help you to get more out of Qigong which is what my whole life is about is helping people to discover this art. I've got it for myself right like it's not it's not about me anymore I've got the art for myself of course I've got more to do on the path to mastery but like you know I got the hang of this thing so my my mission now is to help other people fall in love with the art and really my mission is 
to create Qigong masters, or at least to put people well on the path to mastery. And I want to demystify that. I, I have a lot of students, they've been, they've been doing great, they're well on the path to mastery of Qigong, but they don't view themselves as potential or future Qigong masters, and I think that's a shame, because why not? Why not? We, we have this incredible art, we know more about it than we have, you know, all this stuff has come out of the fog of secrecy of ancient China. You know, we have all these tools, all these methods, and it's the 21st century, we can communicate this stuff across great distances. Why not? Why can't you become a master of an art like Qigong? Why not? Maybe you won't be the best master in the world, but why can't you, sooner or later, put in your 10,000 hours and really get well on the path to mastery in an art like Qigong? You can. That's my opinion. You can, and I would love to see that. I think the world would be a better place if we had more masters of Qigong. So those are my thoughts. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. If you have any criticisms, I'm open to it too. Constructive criticism, of course. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. I hope I helped to frame Qigong in a new light for you. And I hope that you will appreciate the beautiful journey of Qigong rather than worrying so much about the destination. So there you go. That's my talk for today. I look forward to connecting with you again in a future walk and talk. Have a good day and be well.